Hi, I'm Ed Bateman. Welcome to the African Bass Lesson. Through these series of video examples, we'll be demonstrating the similarities and differences through bass playing in different parts of Africa. <laughs> We're starting with a traditional rhythm from Zimbabwe called Songura. This example is a very common 1 4 5 4 chord sequence. So the chords are G major, C major, D major, C major. The bass line I'm playing is derived just of chord tones, so that means that while the guitarist is playing a G major, I would just be sticking to the notes G, B and D. If he's playing a C major, I would just be sticking to the notes C, E and G, and so on. Now the drummer is playing the kick on each beat. This is very common through many styles of dance music, not just in Africa, but throughout the whole world. Now he's playing a rhythm on the hi-hat with no snare. This signifies that this is a vocal section, where there's no snare means there's to be a lot more space especially frequency-wise, for a vocal to sit. Now, any time that we want to change section, we'll be doing so with a signal. This usually would come with a drum fill. That way, we would all change our dynamics at the same time. It's going to give a lot more impact. So, Milva, if the vocal section ends, you give us a roll to take us onto the snare to the dance section. Now, the drummer's moved his rhythm to the snare. I've moved up into the higher register, and this combined, it just encourages people to dance. It's the exact same chord sequence, and my bass line is mainly just using the chord tones on beats one and three, and using some passing notes on beats two and four. These are, well, beats two and four will be said as the less important notes of the, less important beats of the bar for outlining the harmony. Now, some of the concerts that we would do in Africa, typically they could last four hours. That really wouldn't be uncommon, and often that's without a break in the middle. So if we're playing for four hours. Each song, it really could be, could be 20 minutes, 30 minutes. So if we want to keep it interesting, playing just three chords for half an hour, we'd have to play some variations. So I'd wait for the drummer to give a roll first. So as I said before, we move with impact to put it together. So Milba, if you give us a drum roll, to stay on the snare. Now I'm trying to build a bit, bit of tension with this bass line. I'm starting on the chord tone, and then I'm playing an F sharp over the C major. Although F sharp's not in the notes that the guitar is playing on the C major, it just helps to add tension. Now when I want to move back, I wait for the drum roll to give a signal, but if the drummer um, isn't, isn't giving a signal, I'd have to signal to him myself. So I could do this by eye contact. If he wasn't looking, I could play something that's going to signify his ears that the change is coming. So I could do this, I could put in some slides and a, maybe a pedal on a D, as D is going to fit over all the chords in the sequence. And then he releases me back to the other bass line. Now to demonstrate the importance, again, of playing in a lower register during a vocal section, Milba, if you take us back to the hi-hat rhythm. See, he did a really nice clear roll there, so everyone knows we can change at the same time. Now my bass line here just got the chord tones again, just simply stating that. So Milba, if you take us back to the to the snare, please. Now with my bass line here, I'm playing the exact same line, just up an octave. You combine that with the snare, and it gives something that encourages audiences to dance. Now if I want to give the guitarist a bit of space to put his thing, to play some variations, I could stop. I could stop and leave the guitarist some space. So I wait for the drummer to give a roll. So Milford, you give a signal and we give a signal and we'll play some guitar. Now if it was a half hour concert, surely I could leave him for a few minutes or whatever. But for the purpose of the example, I'll do a couple of slides and some more pedal notes. Now, to 
to show you the examples and to show you the differences and similarities between how we would play bass in Zimbabwe, in Southern Africa, and up to Congo in Central Africa. We're going to show you an example of the popular rhythm there called Sukus. So Milba, if you roll me back in, staying on the snare with the Sukus. Now this is a very popular kind of music from Congo. Same chord sequence, exactly the same, just G, C, D, C. Now we're using the same chords just so we can demonstrate exactly how the bass would differ. And with my right hand, instead of using the index finger and the middle finger, I've got my thumb and my, just my index finger. This really gives the Congolese bass sound. And it's also essential because you're playing a lot of low notes on the downbeats of the bar, and we could be playing the high strings on the offbeats. So it just makes it a lot easier. And just like in Congo, sorry, the same with Congo as, as in Zimbabwe, it's not uncommon for a concert to last four hours again. So with a 20 or 30 minute song, we'd have to put in some variations. Now, as the guitarist's first chord is G major, if I played an E underneath that, that would make his chord E minor seven. And it means I could play this variation without the guitarist knowing what I'm going to do. That way it's not going to sound, it's not going to sound unusual. So Milba, if you give us a drum roll and keeping on the snare. So it's a nice variation, you know, especially to take us away from those just three chords. Okay, Milba, if you take us back, back to the snare, another roll, please. Now, just like Zimbabwe, in Congo, when there's a vocal section, they would vary the dynamics. So, during the vocals, they'd stay out of the higher register, just like in Zimbabwe with the songura, and the, and the snare rhythm would move to the hi-hat. So, Milba, if you, move, if you take us to the hi-hat, please. Now we can hear with this bass line, it's just really stating the chords in a rhythmic way that's just outlining the harmony, leaving a lot of space for the vocal. Okay, Milva, can you give us a roll and take us to the end of the song? Now to show you another example of Sukas played live, we're going to show you a clip that we shot recently. They were searching for a better life Maluka kizima love Searching for a better life Yango bati neki nice and mega late Searching for a better life Oh Luka kizima love We're all searching for a better life Zimbabwe and Congo again as examples. We're going to show you the 6 8 rhythms that both countries use as their popular kinds of music. Now, in Zimbabwe, this rhythm is called Chimarenga. Chimarenga comes from the Shona word meaning liberation. It was a style developed by Thomas Mafumu. The chord sequence, again, very simple major chord sequence, just A, D, E, and E again. The bass line I'm playing is just derived from chord tones. With a few variations. Now this is again 
just like the songura and the sucus, this is the kind of thing that would go over a vocal section. It leaves plenty of space for the vocal. When the vocal finishes, if the drummer gives a roll, just like the sucus and the songura, then I can move to a more full line, busier line. So Milbert, if you give us a drum roll, keeping us with the Zimbabwean rhythm. Now this might seem like a more complicated bass line, really. It's just the chord tones, a few variations like this. Apart from the chord tones, I'm playing over this E, I've got a C sharp. Not a note in the chord, but it fits. It fits with the harmony. Now to show you how differently they would play this kind of 6-8 rhythm in Congo, we're going to move to a kind of music called folklore. So if Milba, if you give us a cue to take us to the folklore. Exactly the same chords. A, A, D, E. So I'd like to use this opportunity to say a big thank you. Big thank you to King Fire on the guitar. And big thank you to Milba Kumpambi for playing drums. from Senegal called Mbala. Now in Senegal and Gambia, Mbala is hugely popular. You can hear it absolutely everywhere you go. Yet in the rest of the world, it's, it's not largely exported because the rhythm can be quite difficult for Western people to dance to and, and for Western ears to understand. Now the reason is the way they feel it is like this. And a lot of people would kind of think that's a kind of a, a half-time rhythm. It's very different to a lot of other African countries where you'd find the kick drum playing on each beat of the bar. Uh, people talk about, in all kinds of music, having a strong relationship between the bass and the drums as, as important. Yet in, in all the kinds of music I've ever seen or ever played, I'd say there's, there's nowhere that's more apparent than Senegalese music, and in particular with, uh, with Mbala. Now what I'm playing on the bass, it's mainly chord tones, yet we've got a few more passing notes than we would have in the previous examples of the Sungura and the Sukus. Now, we don't want too much variation. Remember, this is dance music. What we're doing, we're just laying down something solid together with the drums that people are going to dance to. Now, it's quite common with Mbala to have the second part of a song playing a chord, exactly the same chord progression, yet over a 6-8 rhythm at a different tempo. So to show you an example of that, Abdullah is going to sing the signal to give us a cue to go to the second part. And to give it strength, we're going to come in together with the drums. Now this is a rhythm native to the Jola people of the south of Senegal. Exactly the same chord sequence, same chord progression, same strong relationship between the bass and the drums. Now if you listen to what he's doing on that kick, gung, 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 if I'm riding a bass line, the first thing I do is just sink in with that and I build it from there. And talking about that strong relationship between the bass and the drums, if the drummer's playing a fill, I'm going to want to kind of accent with him as much as possible. So Juliana's going to give us a signal to go to the end of the song. So 
So to give you an example of how this would work with a full band, we're going to show you a clip of a song I've written. These examples show that through Southern Africa, Central Africa and West Africa, what's really important with the bass line is to keep a strong rhythmic line going that heavily outlines the chords by using the chord tones, underpins the harmony whilst keeping the groove going, especially under a vocal section. And when the vocals finish, you always have to move with the signal from the drum kit. That way the dynamics will change at the same time, moving up or down, it's going gonna, it's gonna to have a lot of impact together and you can move up to the higher register, especially when the, when the drums have moved from a hi-hat to a snare over a dance section that will just encourage the feeling of the audiences. Now we've seen examples of 4-4 and 6-8 rhythms in Senegal, Congo and Zimbabwe. Hopefully this should give you an understanding of the differences and similarities of African bass playing in these countries. If there's anything more that you'd like to know, please send me a question, get in touch, leave a comment, I'd be happy to answer that. Thanks very much for watching. Thanks to our guitar player, Abdullah Sam from Senegal. Thank you to the drummer behind me, Juliano Orsella. I'm Ed Bateman. This is the African Bass Lesson.